depicts the evolution of the industrial refrigeration system which is suitable for low temperature refrigeration systems, providing high efficiency and low compressor discharge temperatures. We again have the refrigerant flowing the same cycle, but we have a few other components and cycles. In this type, we have a tank called the intermediate cooler, which sits between the receiver and the expansion valve. The main flow of refrigerant passes through the coil inside the tank. The refrigerant passes through this and into the main expansion valve, just like the single stage system. It then continues its flow via the separator, the evaporator, and back to the separator. Another stream of refrigerant comes off the main line and is sprayed into the tank by an expansion valve to produce a cooling effect. As it is sprayed and evaporates into the tank, it cools the submerged coil. This sub cools the main flow of refrigerant inside the coil before it flows to the main expansion valve. The vapor refrigerant being sucked out of the separator still flows to a compressor, but this time we have two compressors. The refrigerant therefore flows to the low stage or booster compressor to increase the pressure. From here it flows and is released into the intermediate cooler which helps to condense the refrigerant. The vapor refrigerant is sucked out of the intermediate cooler and flows to the high stage compressor where it will then flow back into the condenser to repeat the entire cycle. Cascade. This is the most advanced system and these systems can become very complex. It's suitable for refrigeration systems which require different temperature ranges for the cooling loads and also makes it easier and cheaper to comply with health, safety and environmental regulations. It is a little daunting when you first look at this system, but if you've watched this video all the way through without skipping, then you should be able to follow how it works. Just give yourself a moment to trace the pipes and see where everything is flowing. These refrigeration systems usually consist of two or more separate refrigeration circuits, often using different refrigerants to provide a cooling effect. In this system, we have two compressors except they are both circulating refrigerant around separated circuits, a high temperature circuit and a low temperature circuit. Connecting the two circuits is a heat exchanger known as a cascade condenser. We've covered how heat exchangers work as well as the different types in our previous videos. Do check that out, links are in the video description down below. The cascade condenser acts as a condenser for the high temperature circuit, but also an evaporator for the low temperature circuit. The two refrigerants can be the same or they can be different and optimized for each circuit. For example, we could use ammonia for the high temperature side and CO2 for the low temperature side. This would mean that less ammonia is used and the system would be more efficient compared to a two-stage ammonia-only system.